All right, welcome to the Jeff Bruce. I'm Jeff Bruce. Thank you so much for checking out the channel today. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I have a guest on the channel. His name is Coach Cullen. Coach Cullen has been a teacher for a long time. He's taught both in Christian school and in public school. And the reason why I wanted to have him on is as Christian parents, we have to navigate the question of should we send our kids to public school? Now, fortunately today, we have more options than probably ever before. We can obviously do homeschooling or Christian school, but there's also online school, charter schools, so plenty of options out there. And the reason why we need to ask the questions is because of some fears and things that we hear about different ideologies seeping into the public school system. So does that mean we need to pull our kids and just send them someplace else? It's a tough question and it's a major life decision. So as a parent, in the end, you need to make the final decision as to what is best for your kids, but hopefully this conversation will help give you some guidance. Here's my conversation with Coach Cohen. Coach Cohen, how are you doing today? Doing well, Jeff. How are you doing? Doing good. So it's uh, about a week maybe before school starts for you, or how, how long do you have until you guys get back to class? Actually, it's about four days. Oh, wow. We, oh, okay. oh, we go back to class next a week from today. A week from today, we go back to class. Um, I'll have, I have to report in Monday, though. So it's going to be four days to report a week before students show up. All right. Nice. Summer's over. It's okay. Summer's over. Yep. Like what I do for a living. <laughs> so so you are um, a, uh, a husband, a parent. And I know you've taught in Christian school, but you've also taught, you also teach currently in public school. And I think that's been the majority of your time. So how long did you teach in, in both? And maybe what subjects as well? Okay, I taught seven years at a Christian school. My first came out of college. Uh, that would be middle school through high school history. So I did the whole gamut from seventh grade to 12. Taught some gym actually there too. And that's typical of a lot of private schools as you, as you you know, and then came to where I live today in New Jersey, Northwest New Jersey, had got a job as computer teacher first at a public school. And then after two years, I transitioned into becoming their seventh grade history teacher. And I've been doing that. So I've been at the school for 20, the public over 23 years. And I have been a seventh grade middle school history teacher for 21 of those 23. Wow. All right. Good. So history is probably a subject too, where um, maybe there's there's more concern um, from parents because of maybe the uh, the um, at least from what they might hear from from the media that you know like that history sort of has been twisted a little bit to fit different ideologies. Do you do you get any kind of pressure along those lines or no? No, but the pressure is there. It's definitely in the town. I, I think what we're living in right now is everybody believes that like the parents believe teachers are at one extreme all teachers are at one extreme and teachers believe that all parents who voice a concern are at another extreme and that's not a good place to be because what you're doing when you act like that you're pulling either more teachers to the one extreme because you're combative right away or teachers thinking that all parents who have a concern are on the other extreme and they're not they're being pushed into there and we really have to come together and realize you know what's a public school for and kind of deal with the fact, I think even as Christians have to deal with the fact that it's a public school. It's not a Christian school, it never will be. Mm -hmm. And I, there's a lot of people in the middle, and I would say that's another reason why I don't get a lot of pushback, because there's a lot of teachers, like a lot of teachers, lot, the teachers I work with aren't trying to do an agenda. They just, they just want to teach their class. That's all, that's all I want to do. I want to teach history. So you don't have, an ideological slant. Now, people might think there's one, but they're, for the most part, most teachers want nothing to do with it. They just want to teach history. What makes us look bad is the people who are at the extreme, because that's who parents race to think that any small, any small way of saying something they think might be at an extreme, all of a sudden you're an extreme, you're a teacher who's an extremist, mm -hmm. and that might not be the case. Now, one thing I've done, and I started this during COVID, I realized that if they were being locked down, parents didn't know what their kids were necessarily doing in my class. So I pushed out a weekly video and I've been doing that since we've gone back to school for the last two years. 
And I think that's helped. Because I'd say, here is what we're talking about this week. I'm always very balanced. Actually, one of the nicest compliments I got last year, we have these things called advisories, where once every two weeks, a group of sixth, seventh, and eighth graders meet with a teacher. Same teacher, same group every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And one of my colleagues came up to me and said, a student in my class had told her, you know, Mr. Colin is my favorite teacher. And she goes, why? And he said, because he doesn't teach one viewpoint. He allows us to know, here's what one side of the political column believes, and here's what the other side believes. And he doesn't tell us which one's right. He just says, here's what they believe. And he goes, I respect him for that. So that's what I try to do. I think most history teachers try to do that. But again, there are some that don't. That irritates me, irritates teachers like me because they're the problem. Hmm. Right, right. Yeah, so that kind of leads to the, uh, I think the main the main question that, that I wanted to ask you. So um, so you have you have children of your own. They, I assume, have been in public school, you know, their whole lives. Um, so as a as a Christian and as a parent, should Christian parents send their kids to public school with some of the, the worries and fears that they might have? You have to do work. And I don't mean going to a school board meetings. You have to start with the understanding that it's not a Christian school. It's not going to be. You know, give unto Caesar what is Caesar right it's a public school so it's not going to teach everything from your viewpoint there are going to be a diverse there's going to be diverse viewpoints you have to go in there with that understanding you can't go in with the understanding i'm sending my kid to a public school and i'm going to fight so they teach my christian ideology if that's the case then you should either homeschool or send your kid to a christian school just i mean i think that makes sense Mm -hmm. However, I will say this, people who aren't Christians who want to push another ideology, be a progressive ideology, a different religions ideology, whatever it is, whatever philosophical thing that's not Christian, they have to recognize the same thing. I'm not just doing this to say Christians shouldn't be the ones, you know, pounding and make everything like they want. The other side has to do that too, especially if they promote diversity, inclusion, and equity. The Christian voice is one of those voices. It's one of those you know, diverse issues. So both sides have to understand it's a public school. You're going to have Christians, you're going to have non-Christians. You have Jewish, you have Muslim. You're going to have atheists. You're going to have conservatives. You're going to have liberals. And all those views are going to be discussed together. And they all have that. And that's the big thing. They all have to be discussed. Not No one can be shut down. Mm-hmm. So I think a parent has to go in with that understanding, if they're going to send their kid to a public school. The second thing is what I said in the beginning about you have to do the work since they are going to be learning things from different perspectives. You have to present what is the Christian perspective. Mm -hmm. My my daughters have learned early on, like one of the things I have told them early on and they got it. And I I started when they were little kids. It's not a Bible verse. It's this concept daddy doesn't know everything mommy doesn't know everything you will never know everything your teachers don't know everything nobody will know everything we're limited only god knows everything so since we're not god and we don't know everything then what happens is everybody lives on faith the christian lives on faith the atheist lives on faith we we believe there's evidence for what we believe so we all live on faith. I think that's a very basic tenet that Christians should be teaching their kids, that whenever an ideological viewpoint comes out in the classroom, it, it's not that that person knows it 100%. They're basing it on faith themselves. So, Coach, have you ever had to approach a teacher about um, some ideological concern that, that you had, that maybe you saw in them? Yeah, it actually was on a syllabus. Um, we were at back to school night. And I saw the teacher presented the curriculum. Here is the units of study for an English class. And two of the units were evoking change in society and breaking social norms. And that was concerning because we're not talking a high school senior level class. We're talking an eighth grade English class, language arts class. And just so you know, and I think this is a good way to go about it. As a teacher, I would have 
appreciate this. I didn't go to the principal. I didn't go to the department head. I didn't go to the superintendent. I emailed the teacher. And all I really asked was, I saw these, and I, I didn't give an opinion. I just asked a question. Saw these two units on breaking social norms and evoking societal change. Can I ask you, what does that entail? What, what are you going to teach? You, what are you going to read? What are you going to write about? And that way the teacher can address. Now, what happened in my situation was the teacher bumped it up to the department head. And that became an issue because I asked a simple question. So the department head responded back, you know, what do you, and I said, you know, I was a little concerned. Now I'm very concerned because this has been passed up the chain of command. I asked a simple question that I expected a classroom teacher to be able to answer since they're, they're the ones who are implementing the curriculum. Mm -hmm. But so then it got shifted back down to the teacher where it should have been this. The sad thing about it was the teacher's response was fine. I was okay with it, but she escalated it. And I think, and I think that's part of what I said in the beginning about thinking, I think she assumed, oh gosh, he's on this extreme. And he's coming after me. So I'm going to get this to my superior. And I'm going to get it to somebody above me to answer it. But when she answered it, I was like, okay. I mean, I did say I thought the the topics, you know, they were the ones who were saying topics that were very, could be considered inflammatory. And for an eighth grader, I was still concerned about that. Yet at the same time, what they were going to read on the topics, what they were going to write about, was fine it was almost like they had a very like in your almost like a clickbait type topic um line for the unit mm -hmm. but when you actually got to the nuts and bolts of the unit it wasn't that provocative at all right right so that was the one experience i had in, in addressing things and again it was that whole thing of when cool heads just kind of discuss things out you find out that it's you know a lot of times it's not as bad as you assume you know, mm -hmm. get information. That's the best thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, for parents, sometimes the concern is like you have that opportunity to see that as a teacher and see what might be coming. Um, parents can if they if they really invest in their child's education, but but many don't know what might be coming and uh, and may get blindsided. I feel like from from our experience, so our kids went to public school um, their whole lives. Well, with the exception of um, my one daughter was in Christian school for a couple of years because I was I was teaching there. Um, and we were we were fortunate in that they were always pretty open with us and we're we're in a pretty conservative town anyway. So I can't say there was a whole lot of concerns. I think the sex ed thing was was the biggest, biggest thing. Um, but my my oldest daughter spilled her guts every day when she came home from that class. Um, but it seems that that's probably one of the the best things that a parent can do is prepare their kids, kind of build that foundation and then ask questions and try to get feedback. Not every kid is like that, um, but kind of with that, what do what do you suggest for for Christian parents to uh, to be able to lay that foundation, equip and protect their kids as they're in public school? Oh, there, there is so much on the Internet now that our parents did not have access to. You can see the curriculum access to it's going to take you work it's not going to be you can't say to your if you're going to send your kid to a public school you can't say let them handle it. then you're then you're passing off your parental duties to the teachers then anything that happens is on you so you have to do the work look at the curriculum what are they teaching if you're concerned ask one thing like you said talk to your kids hey tell me what you're learning today at school like, that's a great dinner conversation to have and you should be having them. What are we, what are you learning in school? What do you, I always ask my daughters, like you said earlier, the two big courses, um, history, language arts. Of course, as a history teacher, I really want to know why they're, what they're learning in history, but hey, what do you, what you talk about in language arts today? What you talk about in history? Even science, like my daughter came up the other day, we, she asked a question about the dinosaurs and millions of years and it allowed a conversation to begin. This, it's, it's summer and she's talking about you know, this, the earth is 4.5 billion years old and well i shared with her well here is what we you know here's what i believe i go with hugh ross and um it's called progressive creationism progressive not like political progressive progression 
Mm-hmm. Now, some people are probably listening might be young earth. My point is whatever you are on that issue, are you share with your kids and why you believe it? Are you equipping them so they know there is a Christian response? There's, you know, are you teaching them apologetics at home? Is your church teaching them apologetics, but really you. So that's what I mean by doing the work. Yeah, so it's kind of, I was thinking about how um, I think the same can be true, obviously is true that lots of parents, Christian parents do a similar thing with the church because you'd kind of mentioned this as well, that we say, we don't even really say it or think it necessarily, but it happens where we expect our kids to be a certain way because they're attending church or attending youth ministry. And I don't, I don't know why, I guess we then we just feel like, well, I don't really need to be that involved. I don't need to be teaching my kid. Or, or training them up or praying with them regularly. And uh, I think the same thing happens with, with school. We just send them and be like, well, they're probably fine. They'll tell me if there's a concern rather than having that investment um, in their education. You know, God gave you your children to raise and take advantage of the opportunity. That's absolutely, you know, that's something I, I talk about. As you know, I, I'm an adoptive father. I, I was waiting a long time and I, oh, my wife and I really wanted children. Trust me, even the hard work, even the struggles of talking about them with certain topics, it's a joy. It really is because that's where I want to be. And you want to have kids. That's where you want to be. You want to be in the hardest parts as well as the, as the fun parts. So coach, you have a, uh, a podcast called the parent teacher conference. You want to share a little bit about what uh, people will expect if they hear that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it came out about stuff I've talked earlier, the idea that that we have people believing, we have parents believing teachers are on one extreme on these ideological issues, and we have teachers believing parents are on the other extreme. So really the parent-teacher conference, I try to play both roles, since I am both roles. I'm a parent and I'm a teacher. So I try to look at things from both sides. Now, some episodes are more heavy on teachers, some are more heavy on the parent side. But I think there's something for everybody, especially because a lot of teachers are parents themselves, so they can always get something out of it. But yeah, I've been doing that for about six months. I've been, um, I actually got my first sponsorship. That's kind of a neat thing. Um, so nice. now we're sponsored by a learning app called Fan School. So things are on, on the, you know, it, turned, it was started out as a hobby. And so I'd love for any of your listeners and viewers to tune into it. You can find it on Spotify parent conference you can find it on spotify apple podcast google podcast and amazon music great that's awesome and how can people reach out to you if they have any questions or follow-ups or anything yeah they can feel free to reach out at p t c so parent teacher conference ptc podcast all one word at gmail.com ptc podcast 411 at gmail.com all right, we'll make sure we put that at the bottom here. All right, Coach, thank you so much for uh, for sharing that that insight. Hopefully it's going to be helpful to some parents this school year and making the decisions they need to make, or, or at least in the future. So uh, definitely appreciate your time. Hey, Jeff, always great to be talking with you. Thanks. So guys, once again, thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Jeff Bruce. Feel free to contact Coach Cohen. I'm sure he'll respond, and he is a great guy and just really knowledgeable in this area. If you found this video helpful, please share it with somebody that you think can benefit from it. And make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you guys next time.